I turned the recording on here. Um, John, I uh, and everybody on here that that uh, has has enjoyed being part of Legendary Tribe. You, what you probably don't know is that for me, this started 20 plus years ago when I cleaned a bar, and I would get up at three o'clock in the morning and I would walk down the the back alleys of Old Boise and and uh, and enter into this dirty grunge basement bar that didn't have any lights. And for five or six hours, I would clean up the broken bottles and the the unmentionables on the floor and the poopy toilets and, and scrub this this really um, quite dirty place. And at the time, I took my Christmas money and I bought this program. Um, I... Uh, I didn't know I was going to get emotional on this. I bought this course called I Believe by a guy named Les Brown. And uh, and I, Les was my companion in the uh, in the basement of that bar. And this is before I had had businesses or made millions of dollars or had tens of thousands of people go through my program. I didn't even know that there would be programs at that point. I didn't know that there would be businesses or companies I'd buy and sell or, or kids that I would have or any of these things. It was all just seeds of possibility. And I would listen to this, to this master, master teacher, Les Brown, as he would, as he would uh, talk about the life path that he had and the seed of greatness in him, this possibility of greatness that would, would, uh, you know, like how to, how to bring it forth. And he planted in me uh, a dream and a vision that has manifested in my life into being real in the world. And it's, as, as Les would go through this program, I'd be down there cleaning those dirty floors and picking up the broken glass. He would end his, his conversation. He ended that particular program with this quote, um, with this poem. And I listened to it so many times that I committed it to memory. I actually wrote it like 25 or 30 times until I had it completely memorized. And uh, so I, I don't know if he's actually listening or watching here, but if not, then we'll share this recording with him. But um, this made such a deep impact in me, it seared it into my soul. And I had a dream for the last 20 years that I knew at some point I'd get to interact with Les Brown. And, and I made a commitment to myself that when that moment happened, that this is how I would do it. <sighs> if you want something bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time and your peace and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, life seems useless and worthless without it. If you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after this thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold, poverty, famish, or gout, sickness or pain of body and brain can take you away from this thing that you want, if dogged and grim you besiege and beset it, with the help of God, you'll get it. The so less wrong. Thank you. Thank you, man. Wow, you throw that up. <laughs> you own that. <laughs> you that was you and me in the bar, bar Les. You and me in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me cheer bumps. <laughs> wow. Oh man. Come on. You you look here, I just turned 75 February the 17th. You you about to make the old man cry. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Thank you, Les. you planted Thank you. you planted seeds that are coming out. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate you, and and that you're hearing the voice, and that you are furthering the legacy of making a difference. That you've made a commitment with your life to live a life that will outlive you. And so I thank you. I honor you, and your commitment to be a person of change. You know, Horace Mann, I always quote him, who said, we should be ashamed to die 
until we've made some major contribution to humankind. And I believe that we all have a responsibility to do that. So I'm, I'm so very honored to share this time with you. Thank you, Russ. This is so beautiful as, as we're here in this moment, like I, I, I reflect back to the many mentors that, that have led me here. You know, we all stand on the shoulders of the giants that came before us. And for me, Les has definitely been one of those giants. Um, and I remember the countless hours that I spent listening to Les's deep, rich voice and his inspiring soul awakening spirit. And, um, and I remember the first time I actually, when I was beginning my, my dream of being a speaker, when I was beginning my, my quest to share my voice and figure out who, who I was, who is Gerald Rogers in the midst of the Les Browns and the Jack Canfields and the Tony Robbins and the Zig Ziglar, who is, who is Gerald Rogers to, to share a message? And I remember I had this gift of being able to go to a workshop that Les put on in Orlando, Florida. For three days, Les put on this workshop about finding your voice and sharing your gift with the world. And I remember being able to sit at the feet of a master, sharing his legacy of love and courage with, with me. And, and um, you know, as the years passed, like there was this, these moments of like me leaning on that courage that I built during that workshop in, in my soul. Right, both of those days and, and, and the other things that I'd done to like build within me the capacity to create and to lead. And, and then I was so blessed, um, Les, I'm not even sure if you remember this, but I was holding an event in Orlando, Florida and, and you happened to be speaking at an event like two doors down in the exact same hotel. And I was like, came over and we're like, Les, hey, will you come speak to our audience too? And so generously you came over and, and you you just lit up the souls of the people in that room like you always do. <laughs> and, um, I, I remember, I remember that. No, th there are certain things that you don't forget. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, I was at Cancer Centers of America because I had such an excruciating pain. And I told my son to, to reach out to you because we was going to be on this call. And, and they told me they wanted me to come back there. I said, you know what? I said, I'm not coming back today. <laughs> I got a call. I've got to be on. <laughs> oh, man, ain't coming back today. We got to do something later on, but it ain't going to be today. <laughs> and, and I tell you, what's so, what's so good about it is that they gave me something for, for the pain. And I always tell them I don't want oxycodone. I, I want something that's not addictive. And sure enough, they prescribe when I was there the last time, oxycodone, and I refused to get it. But when just re preparing for now and looking forward to speaking with you now, I feel better in my body. So, you know, the pharmaceutical company ought to track you down and say, what is it you doing that you make it motivated? <laughs> <laughs> what you got going on up in here, up in here? So I, I just want to thank you for who you are and how you're showing up and the impact that you're making. And because I believe that you're never too old to learn and you're never too young to teach. And so here you are motivating me, got me fired up, giving me cheer buffs. And, and, I, just, I, I, and I, I just, I'm so thankful for who you are and the, and the people that you've surrounded yourself with. And that this has been to me, a very challenging time because of all the things that's going on. And th there's a song I heard years ago that's really appropriate, and it might sound hokey to a lot of people, but it, I think it was Donna Ross who did it. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing we can't to get too much out. You remember that song? Yeah. Oh, you're too young for that. So oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. yeah, you remember that song. Of course. Yes, I think it was Diana Ross who did that. Yes. And, and so I do believe that that's real. And that we are the voices to do that, to bring that forth, to call that forth. And through our example and through our compassion and and our love that we can bring about a change 
before we leave here that we were we were born for such a time as this and and to serve the my favorite book says the greatest among you will be your servant and so i think that when we look for ways in which we can serve and come from a place of love that we can bring about lasting change on the planet right. and not give up not and not become hopeless Les, I just want to say we really love and appreciate you and thank you so much for the influence you made. I was in tears listening to Tony and Gerald and the impact you've made on them. And so we're sending you lots of love right now. I think it's that the love of our tribe, the frequency here that helps us to feel better and to uh, connect with each other. So thank we're, you so we're much. We're sending you so much healing energy right now. Les, um, just, uh, I, I know we're going to be meeting just privately with you for a moment um, after this is done, but while everyone else is here, like you have just been an example for millions of people of this courage of living the tenacity of, of being a messenger and sharing your voice with the world. And you've had to overcome unbelievable odds to make that happen. What final words of wisdom or insights would you like to share with the people here that you could leave them with based on your soul wisdom? Well, one of the things I, I'd like to, to leave with everyone is that it's easy to have faith and a spirit of optimism when things are going well. It's easy then. The true challenge is for us to have faith and a spirit of optimism and expectation to be relentlessly engaged in life even when we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel that we must stand fast, that we must trust and know that things are gonna work out all right. To live our place from a place of knowing, that's where we are now. And let me explain this. I'm an I'm a inspirational speaker for a Jewish carpenter. And I think the only way you can stand outside of a grave and call somebody's name <laughs> You got to know something that everybody else don't know. <laughs> you know, Lazarus. Excuse me, Jerusalem Slim. The man is dead. You don't bury people that's alive. Lazarus. Listen, man, I think he's lost it. I think, you know, I don't know. I think he's lost it. Lazarus. And things begin to happen. And we're in a Lazarus moment that we must know, in spite of what we see, we must know, judge not according to appearances. We must know when people are losing hope and feel powerless, over 30 million people have lost their jobs. We must know that we will get through this. This has not come to stay. We must know this is a time for us to turn to each other rather than on each other. We must know we're not given the luxury of, of, of being possessed with fear. Zig Ziglar said the majority of people, when they see fear, they forget everything and run. But there's a small number of people who face everything and rise. And we must know this has not come to stay. This has come to pass. We will get through this. We were chosen one out of 400 million sperm to create a better world for our children and for our children's children. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had this jarring moment with Dr. Alfred Gosen, who told me that I had fourth stage cancer. And at that time, my PSA was 2,400. That was 27 years ago. And I said, can you give me a second opinion? He said, yes. And you're ugly, too. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't just call me ugly, did you? <laughs> he said, yes. <laughs> and then he said, but you can get through this. We determine the diagnosis. You and God determines the prognosis. You can get through this. And I use this strategy when I speak and when I'm training speakers, because when we laugh, 
The mind shut down, but the heart opens up. And he came back and, and spoke in a jarring way. How we live our lives is a result of the story we believe about ourselves. And he interrupted the collective story that people have that when they hear the word cancer, you have cancer, that it's a death sentence. He interrupted that story. And I knew when he spoke, it meant in my heart, I felt it in my bones. You will get through this. You will get through this. You and God determine the prognosis. We determine the diagnosis. And whatever people are facing, I believe at this point in time that we have to stand in that place of trusting and knowing we will get through this. We will be victorious on the other side. In the middle of a surgery, it looks like a murder, but on the other side is a healing. We will get through this. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, Les, the love I have for you is so immense. And on behalf of our entire tribe, we're just sending you so much healing love and energy and light and gratitude for the gift that you've been for all of mankind. And thank, thank you. you for the courageous days and nights, the countless trips on airplanes and, and nights in hotels and, and moments when you probably didn't feel like getting up and showing up, but you did anyways, because you remembered that your message, the gift that was given to you wasn't given for you. It was to be given through you. And uh, I'm grateful that somehow God through you gave me the gift that I, I've gotten to experience in my life. Tony, any final yeah. words? Well, I wanted to say something too. One of my new favorite moments is going to be forever ingrained in my mind when my Dear friend and business partner and brother Tony was sharing his story about his hero lesson at the end. You hear your laugh lesson. <laughs> well, I can't wait for us to have more than a virtual hug, all right? <laughs> you know? I was just in tears because I, oh man, you've inspired so many people and they're just, I know that that meant a, really a lot to Tony. So thank you so much for showing up here. Thank today. you so much. It is it is my honor to serve. And I, I just can't wait to give him a big bear hug. But I see <laughs> I'm going to have to give you a hug up in here, up in here. <laughs> <laughs> thank I love you. it. It's such a delight to hear your laugh, Les, because for 20 years I've been visualizing this moment. And I, and I would hear your laugh as I would visualize it. <laughs> thank you. I, I knew you knew what that poem meant. <laughs> oh, yes, you did it. You gave me chip up. I said, oh, oh, he's up in my space up in here, up in here. <laughs> I love it. Where are you? I'm in Idaho. I've been uh, up by uh, the Canadian border in Idaho. Oh, okay, fantastic. Well, I tell you, I'm in Atlanta. I, I, I moved here. I have uh, my granddaughter and my great-grandson lives here. I have four. I have, first of all, I'm suing the Catholic Church. The rhythm method does not work. I've got five <laughs> sons and five daughters, and I have 15 grandchildren and four great grandsons. <laughs> okay, so, but I tell you, it's uh, I have more energy, and I feel like I have a new lease on life. When I left yesterday, the Cancer Centers of America, uh, uh, Dr. Taha just shook his head and he said, "You're a tough cookie." <laughs> I said, thank you, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would, I would just, uh, I want to end with this little thought of sometimes we have a dream and if we're patient and we, we hold true to it, the circumstances come together for it to happen in ways that we won't expect. So I just, yeah. I appreciate this opportunity. This has been Truly something I've thought about for many, 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 many years, and I'm grateful to get to say it to you in person, Les. And well, at this stage of my life, what I'd like to do is whatever you are doing, I'd like to leverage my name and my reputation and things that I achieved to support you in that. So please, those, it keeps me, I mean, it is amazing. I'm not in pain. And I'm so grateful. 
I've, I was looking forward to, to this morning, morning and I'm so grateful that I'm, I'm in where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing that which I'm supposed to do. And I know that the work that, that you're involved in is meaningful and I want to, I want to serve you and help whatever projects that you have going. Thank you, Les. All right. I, I still got the juice. <laughs> <laughs> you still got the magic. The Thank you. Immutable magic of Les Brown. Everyone go ahead and chime in the chat below if you uh, all just uh, really appreciated having the gift of Les Brown with us this morning. And for for everyone that's here, like our mission with the Legendary Tribe is to create this this army of light, to create this 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 group of individuals that are so committed to the transformation of the planet that they're willing to do the work on themselves. And yes. it's a beautiful group of people we have. And I, I love every one of the souls that's here and all the every one of the souls that we're calling in. Because this is this is our mission is to create these experiences for more of mankind so that we can all be elevated by the inspiration and wisdom. Can you of the world. see everybody? I don't know if you have gallery view, but these are incredible people that are here. Mm, no, I see I see only I love my tribe. People. All right, everyone, everyone just okay. put yourself off me for just a moment and just thank Les personally. Les. Thank you, Les. Les. Awesome. Love you, Les. Thank you, Les. Les. The inspiration. Thank you, thank you, Les. Thank you, Les. Thank you so thank much, Les. Les. Beautiful. Oh, Beautiful. Of your laughter. Oh, my God. Thank you. 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 Every morning. Thank you, Les. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I'd like to do is. It's an honor for you to be here with us. I'm going to send something to Gerald to send out to all of you. Can we do that? I want to send them. I want to send out to all of you that's on the call, something called Choosing Your Future, my gift to you and for being a part of, of, of this. I think that you're going to really enjoy it. It's something that's made for this point in time. Wait, 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 honey. Yes, and I also encourage you, my, my new book is called, You Gotta Be Hungry. <laughs> you gotta be hungry, the greatness within to win. I love it. And, and I, you're going to enjoy that. And what I like to do is, after you go through it, I like to come on with Gerald and Tony and 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 whomever he still desire, and we do a session on that. Please. Yes, I love that. <laughs> All right, awesome. Because yes. I, my goal That's is fun. to they ask me if what what what's next for you? I said, well, I. Aspire to inspire until I expire. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to really enjoy it. So go to I am hungry less brown dot com. I am hungry less brown dot com and I'd like to help I'd not like to make myself available for you. I am hungry less brown dot com. Awesome. I believe these classes that I do, I'm having a hot flash now. That's a part of the of the the cancer treatment that I received, it's uh, but this they said we have never had a patient who's been dealing with fourth stage cancer, and with this kind of mindset and attitude, and and you always find a way to turn it into something positive. Like I call my hot flashes from the Lupron power surges, <laughs> but I. But I want to, I want to help those who who have a passion for helping and making a difference in people's lives. I'm here to serve you, and I want to give to you. And so, I thank you so much for how you're showing up in life and allowing me to be a part of the process. And I thank you for your prayers. And your prayers do mean a lot to me. It mean a lot to me. And I feel them. Don't believe that prayers don't work. And I thank you so much for this time that you have listened to me and allowed my voice to be a voice of change for you. And I cannot wait for this period that we're, we are growing through now. Is that in life you will always be faced with a series of God-ordained opportunities brilliantly disguised as problems and challenges. And I believe this is a 
God-ordained moment that we were chosen for and that there's a spiritual solution in here. Wayne is speaking to us and we must always hold and take a stand in that place. And I thank you so much. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy <laughs> saying, it's been a plug pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. God bless you and God bless your dream. So let's, um, I feel inspired just while we have our tribe together. Would it be okay if I pray for you right now? And yes. Send this energy. Yes. Just invite everyone just hold this energy right now and just imagine that you're encapsulating less in this beautiful light of healing golden energy right now. And oh mighty universe, dear God, beloved source of life, we pray at this time and call upon thy healing power to pour upon Les Brown and bless him with the strength and the capacity that he needs to continue to fulfill his mission, his gift and his purpose on this planet. Bless him with the healing required right now to give him the strength to rise above adversity and continue to shine as a light for mankind. Bless him right now that that healing light might pour through him and, and can cancel out and cast out all darkness and all toxins and all all of those things that would prevent him from showing up fully and giving his gift to the world, bless him right now, that he might feel this energy of light pouring through him and the love of all those that are here now and all of those around the world that adore and love this dear man, bless him with the strength and the courage and, and the love that is required as he continues to rise above his adversity and to demonstrate the power and potential that he has. And we ask for these blessings in the name of all that is good, all that is true, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of all of those that carry with them the healing banner of, of truth. And we say these things. Amen. 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 So, so it is. So it is. Thank you so much. I feel it. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. No, the no. best is yet to come. It is. And you've got a lot more inspiring to do before you expire. So it's, it's going to be a long, long time before Les's time is done on this planet because the world needs you now more than ever. I agree with that. Let me know how I can serve you. I'm here for you. Yeah, absolutely. And if you know of anything can, that can be helpful to make cancer history, in my life. Anything that you know that would be helpful, please yeah. let me know and share that with me. Okay. What do you say? Gerald's brother is actually a master healer. He traveled the world with uh, Dr. Naram who helped people all over the world to be able to heal. And um, he, he has a book coming out. Anyway, he's amazing. He lives in India and we'll definitely uh, connect you. Okay. My email is lesbrown77 at gmail.com. So please. And <clears throat> we need to do some virtual stuff. I'm, I'm in the house and I, I stay out of, I, I believe I'm being cooperative. I'm staying away, keeping a, a social distance because of the underlying issue of fourth stage cancer and diabetes. And, and the challenge of keeping a social distance from the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> pray for me, please, pray for me. Okay, so I sent me a sweet potato pie made with stevia. It's been calling my name all night long and I'm going down there. <laughs> I'm going downstairs. Okay, thank you so much. I'll uh, take you. care. All right. Um, all right. Take